How to draw dot and cross diagrams for polyatomic ions Poly is a Greek word which means many in English. So a polyatomic ion is an ion which contains more than one atom. I've summarized five steps on how to draw the dot and cross diagrams for polyatomic ions. Firstly, decide on the central atom. The central atom is usually the least electronegative atom. Electronegativity increases across the period and decreases down the group with fluorine being the most electronegative atom, followed by oxygen and then nitrogen. Secondly, draw in the rest of the other atoms and the bracket. Next, depending if it's a cation or anion, note which atoms will gain or lose the electrons. The general rule is that for cations, electrons are lost from the less electronegative atom, while for anions, electrons are gained by the more electronegative atom. Then, make the outer atoms achieve octet first, and then finally make the central atom achieve octet. Let's take a look at the first example. We will need to first decide on the central atom, and in this case, it is bromine because bromine is less electronegative compared to fluorine. Then, we just gotta draw in the remaining fluorine atoms and the brackets with the positive sign to denote that it is a cation. Next. Since it is a positive sign with a 1, it means that one electron is lost from the less electronegative atom, and in this case, it is the central atom, bromine. So initially, bromine has 7 valence electrons, and after losing one electron, it will have 6 valence electrons. With that in mind, let's go on to make the outer fluorine atoms to achieve octet first. As fluorine has 7 valence electrons, we will expect fluorine to contribute one electron and also bromine to contribute one electron so that covalent bonding can occur. Now, let's make the central atom achieve octet. Since bromine has lost one electron and used up two electrons to make the outer fluorine atoms achieve octet configuration, it has four valence electrons left, which just nice, we can draw in two pairs of electrons. So, this is how the dot and cross diagram for BrF2 plus will look like. For the second example, the central atom in this case is sulfur, because it is less electronegative compared to fluorine. Then, we draw in the rest of the fluorine atoms, the brackets, and the negative charge sign. Since it is a negative sign, one electron is gained by the more electronegative atom, which is one of the fluorine atoms. So for example, this particular fluorine atom will have one additional electron, which makes it eight valence electrons. Then, we can go on to make the outer atoms achieve octet configuration. So fluorine and sulfur will each contribute one atom, forming covalent bonds and achieve octet for these two fluorine atoms. Take note that for the fluorine atom that gained the electron, since it's already in octet configuration, it will donate a pair of electrons to the central sulfur atom in what we call coordinate or dative bonding. Finally, we can now make the central sulfur atom achieve octet. Since sulfur originally has 6 valence electrons and used up 2 electrons to form covalent bonds with the 2 fluorine atoms, it has 4 electrons left, which just nice again, we can draw in as 2 pairs of electrons. So this is how the dot and cross diagram for SF3- will look like.